Uh, before I actually get into talking about galvanic vestibular stimulation today, um, I'd first like to begin with providing you some context. So, it's widely accepted that human movement is quite varied and complex. And in order to perform a particular task or movement such as running in different environments, we require feedback about the success of our actions in those environments. In order to provide us with this feedback, we rely on three main sensory systems. Our visual system, our somatosensory system, which is really uh, an all-encompassing umbrella term that includes uh, feedback such as touch feedback that we get through our skin, and our vestibular system, or as some people refer to it as our inner ear system. And this will be the focus of my talk today. Now the organs of the vestibular system are very, very small, and they're located bilaterally in the head, very close to the auditory system. And while we might not readily be aware of the information that the vestibular system is providing us uh, in the same way as, say, vision, um, its importance to us when we're healthy really becomes uh, relevant uh, during vestibular malfunction. So what kind of information does the vestibular system provide us? Well, the vestibular system is going to provide us information about how the head is moving, both in a rotational sense and in a linear sense. And how is it going to do this? Well, it's going to transmit this information to the brain via the vestibular nerves. And these nerves are unique. They're not simply um, nerves in the way of on-off switches, but these nerves are constantly sending information to the brain, even as we're just standing still or sitting still. And this property of the vestibular neurons is unique in that it allows us to get information from the vestibular nerves to the brain when either we increase the firing of the neural impulses that are sent to the brain or decrease the firing of the neural impulses that are sent to the brain. And in fact, it is actually the changes in the neural firing patterns of these impulses that get sent to the brain that provides us information about how our head is moving. So that's all well and good, but how can we use this knowledge to, to learn more about the vestibular system and then therefore study it? Well, in the 1800s, there was a technique that was developed called GBS. And GBS simply stands for Galvanic Vestibular Stimulation. And to a lesser extent of what's being experienced by our guy up here, GBS involves passing very small currents through the head um, in order to non-invasively and selectively activate the vestibular system. So how does this work? So it involves placing a negative and a positive electrode on either side of the head and passing a very small current through. And when we do this to a participant, what this does is it artificially changes the firing patterns of the vestibular nerve. So the impulses that are sent, that firing rate will change. And when this happens, our participant here, in the absence of vision, will think that their head has moved when in fact it hasn't. And when this happens, in order to prevent the illusion that the head is falling to one side, we see this observed um, compensatory postural sway or lean in the opposite direction in order to uh, recover, this, uh, recover their balance. And this technique is quite nice because all you really need to do it is something, uh, some kind of machine that can elicit this constant current and a willing participant. And it just so happens that we have both of those things today. So I'm going to bring Catherine up to the front of the stage here. Thank you, Catherine. Okay, so what we're going to do here with Catherine is we're, she's going to help us demonstrate this technique today. So all I want you to do, Catherine, is I want you to just face the audience, stand nice and relaxed, and I want you to close your eyes. Okay? And you can see that with her eyes closed, she's able to maintain her balance quite readily. But as soon as I start to turn on the current, we can elicit this postural sway response within Catherine. And the nice thing about this uh, technique is we can use it to evaluate the importance of vestibular information during different tasks. So what we're going to do now, Catherine, is we're going to get you to jump. Okay? <laughs> so, so when you're ready, you're going to jump straight up, land straight back down. Okay? Ready? Three, two, one. Okay? <laughs> Perfect. 
Now, raise your hand if you thought that her postural response or her postural sway was increased in response to the jump or decreased relative to just quietly standing there. Who thought it was increased? Cool, so the majority of you. So the last thing we want to do is we're going to make her walk. So if you want to come down <laughs> to the front here. <laughs> okay, so all the people right on the edges of the, the two rows here, you don't have to stand up or anything, but you guys are going to be my spotters. <laughs> okay? So, so first what I'd like to do, Catherine, is I want you to fixate on a, a straight ahead target, so probably the video camera right there. And I want you to close your eyes and I want you to walk straight to it. And I won't, I'm not going to do any GBS the first time because I want to see if she can even do that. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> so when you're ready at a self-selected pace, go ahead. Perfect. And turn around. So you can see that she was pretty good at being able to do that. Closing her eyes. Hopefully you guys are all making sure that she wasn't peeking. And she was able to walk straight ahead. So I want you to do the exact same thing, Catherine. And at some point, you may or may not receive GPS. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so come on over here, Catherine. If everyone would like to give Catherine a round of applause. <laughs> so, most of you noticed that when Catherine either jumped or was walking, her response to the same level of stimulus was increased. So it just goes to, goes to suggest that we may rely on vestibular information more when we're moving than when we're just standing still. So other than being able to uh, do some fun things with, uh, with our guinea pig Catherine here, what else can we do with this technique? And what else is being done with it? Um, so some of the things that we can use it for is we can use it to evaluate how vestibular information changes as we age. So how do we use vestibular information when we're young, healthy adults versus how, we, how do we use it uh, when we're older adults? We can use it to help diagnose certain uh, pathologies such as multiple sclerosis and or different types of vertigo. And we can also use it to evaluate um, certain conditions such as car sickness or sea sickness, where there's a sensory imbalance or uh, sensory integration imbalance. And with that, I'd like to thank Ted for putting all this on, and I'd like to thank you for your attention.